welcome back to the channel and all that. Today we're going to get professional powder coating results at home. It's a beautiful cold Sunday morning in Northeast Pennsylvania and the perfect time to be in the garage playing with hot ovens and all that. So I got an assortment of parts. This isn't all of them, but we're going to clean these all up, get them stripped down, ready for sandblasting. There's a lot of spots, especially like in this one here where we might enter the uh, Faraday cage problem. So hopefully we can kind of get in between all this, but you see it's corroded, all that. So it definitely needs cleaned up before we can even think about any of that. And I got these coil brackets, which you can see this one's actually rusted a little bit through here on this corner. We're gonna strip this all down, sandblast, clean it up, and see how well things come out. So, I will save you the expense of teardown, and I will see you shortly. So now we begin degreasing parts. That way we can fire up this bad boy. That way we can get into our next segment, sandblasting. You can see here I'm cleaning up one of those coils. I'm making sure to get into every crevice and all the edges and all them nooks and crannies. The great thing is this melted that rust away. No problem. So there's no worries on that being an issue. sandblasted parts you can see there's two extras that showed up they do need the seals removed still I left those in for sandblasting to protect those surfaces but at this point we need to blow all this off getting the loose sand off and then we're going to wipe it down with mineral spirits to help degrease the surface and get anything off of there the whole time once they get wiped down strictly going to be using gloves no matter what these parts will never be touched by hands again until they're fully coated and that's because we don't want oil grease or anything from our hands all over these parts but there's one thing we're going to do before they do get coated but after they get wiped down these are actually going to go into the oven and get pre-baked now you're probably thinking oh no he's thinking about hot flock ovens no I actually want to outgas these aluminum parts. The steel parts will be okay. These aluminum parts are actually going to get baked 50 degrees higher than the cure temp for a little bit just to off gas and get anything out. And the idea behind that is, is that the pores will open up at the higher temperature and allow more of the gas from, from casting and all that out. Whereas when we bake it at our full temp, well, our cure temp, which will be 400 degrees for what I'm using, the pores actually won't open up as much, so therefore they shouldn't outgas at those temps for coating. Let's start cleaning parts. We have a little inconspicuous bag. This is going to make a big difference. And with the power of magic. What? Oh, I guess I didn't read that on the box. No filters included. Oh, I'll go get one from the furnace, I guess. So here we are, we got that part in the oven, it is baking. Right now, even though the oven says 400, which for the powder I'm using, prismatic high gloss black, 
is 400 degrees at 10 minutes, but that is when the part reaches 400 degrees. So we're gonna keep occasionally checking it with an infrared meter and all that. And once it hits 400, that's when the 10 minutes will start. And then we're gonna pull it out, let it cure. Well, wow, let it cool. I'm getting tongue tied here, but we're gonna let it cool and all that. And then we'll see how well it came out. And if you're wondering, that's a modded Harbor Freight powder coat gun. If you wanna see how to do that mod, you can check out my previous video. I'll show you how to do that mod step by step, but pretty easy. The big thing is with the mod, as you've seen, it doesn't solve the powder uh, spoosh per se, but it lets you use a lot less powder when coating, but it requires good trigger control too. So keep that in mind. If you notice, I wasn't pulling that trigger all the way and I had my PSI set actually about three PSI for that whole spraying. And I did make one mistake with my uh, pop-up spray booth, which may be something you guys can avoid if you get one of those, it's a Wagner. But I had the, the box fan set all the way on high. I should have had it on one because it was kind of fighting for the uh, electro charge for the part on the powder because the fan just wanted to pull that by. I didn't think that was gonna be an issue with it on high. So when I do all these other guys here, we're gonna turn that down on one for that Lasco box fan. So until then, I will catch you. All right, so here we are back at the bench with our powder coated bracket, which really just wanna kind of show how nice that came out. Especially when you consider this thing had a lot of rust and other things and the old coating was peeling. This is much better, much, much. Which, there's a few things I wanna highlight cause worry about these tight spaces. Let's see if I can get that up in the camera. But you can see it got right down in there, no problem. So, didn't have to worry about the Harbor Freight unit letting down on getting in behind and in those hard to reach places. This is fully coated all the way around, which is perfect. So, I'm gonna move on. You guys, though, are gonna have to wait to see the other ones. And that's because I have a lot of color choices in mind, per se, and I have a few other things I wanna do, but I wanted to give you an overview of how to get professional powder coating at home. Pretty simple, easy, and if you're wondering about the powder usage, I had a pound of powder when I started this one, and all said and done, I barely used any. The container is still pretty darn full. So I can get all my parts and then some with just this, which is great because I got a lot of suspension parts too that are gonna get powder coated. But thank you for watching. If you like this, please like the video. And remember, if you wanna see more like this, subscribe.